All right, Finns News fans, we're going to take a look at another player from Parts Unknown, Salvin Ahmed, the Miami Dolphins' primary running back from their win against the Chargers. Just another guy that nobody wanted, that Brian Flores was able to really just coach up, prepare, and put him in when needed and to have him succeed. He put out a PFF grade of 68, which is above average. And when you watch his, uh, his tape, I mean, he's a very solid back, very solid backup. So let's go, let's run the tape and take a look at what we see. All right, as we go over the film, we're going to see that there were plenty of times that Ahmed had very little space to work with. But what he did with that little space really shows why Brian Flores felt comfortable with him being the starter going into the game. Because any back can make something happen when space is available. But when the play breaks down or the blocking isn't up to par, what that back does, how much space he can eke out or he can find in those little bit of creases or in the little bit of space that's available really shows whether he's a true professional or not. And we'll see on his very first play that Kinley gets destroyed. And this is something that we're starting to see a little bit more of, and I'm getting a little concerned with Kidney's play. He has a tendency, because he's so physical, to drop his head, and he does a lot of head butts when he blocks, and that is not a great technique. His hand technique is a little off. It's not very strong. His footwork's pretty decent. But I don't know if it's the Tyrannosaurus Rex arms he has or what, but he, when he drops his head, he, he has a tendency to either devastate somebody or get beat. And on this one, he gets beat. Beat bad. But the point being is that right here, a back would have a tendency to drift across the line of scrimmage. But instead... Ahmed turns it right up. He knows the play is a bust, and he's going to try to maximize it, get back to the line of scrimmage. You can see here again, Kinley is getting beat again. And this is on a slide, a uh, zone stretch play. <clears throat> and I think his size limits his ability to go laterally. Uh, I'll have to watch more of that. But he gets beat here, and I think Smythe gets beat too over here. And the play breaks down. You're going to see him cut it right up, and he's going to make the most of it. Now, he could have stretched it down, tried to make more out of it, and it would have been a negative play or back to the exact line of scrimmage, but he picked up two or three. Again, this is something you can work with. It shows a true professional. Now, there were times that the space was wide open, and they do a lot of um, movement blocks. They'll pull and slide, and they do counters. They really use a wide array of running plays, which is excellent. Look at this. This is huge amount of space. So it's not that the Dolphins can't run block. It's just a consistency. But look at this. I mean, he's making something happen here. And, you know, it's not elite, but it's above average and it's good. And he picked up a very good play. Zone stretch with a counter block. And, you know, for a person who really loves blocking, the, um, the amount of variety that the Dolphins use is just very interesting. And also, I think it adds to the complexity of the play and, and, and how this offensive line is going to develop. Because it is complex. So in, as time progresses, you're going to see more and more holes open. And I think that's what we've been seeing so far, a slow growth in the run blocking. <clears throat> he is not elite, but there's, he's got talent. He's a uh, slicer and dicer. He's, he's light on his feet. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't jump cut, but he's got this pitter-patter where he can get in motion, and he has pretty good short area quickness and agility. So he's trying to find his way. He sees the linebacker here, and he's trying to hold him for a second because he sees space over here. But he's got two guys coming from the flank. But his ability to cut on a dime and burst, he's got very good first gear speed. 
very good first gear acceleration. He just blew past the defender, which was very nice. And he's able to take it out again. You know, you can see here that, you know, a, an elite running back would have been able to get out of this. He's just not that big. His strength isn't that great. He's, uh, you know, like 5'11", 193. So that, that hand blow was able to knock him. But still, I mean, this is, for a guy that came off the scrap heap that nobody wanted, he just made five yards out of basically a dead play. As you see in the pull, you're seeing Flowers pull over here. There's a lot of motion. It's a lot for a defender, uh, a defense to, to take into account. It's just, again, it, it, it's pressing the intelligence of the opposing team, the discipline of the opposing team. It's very fun to study. So again, he, you know, a lesser back would try to break it out here and do a OJ Simpson and take it to the corner, but he knows, much like uh, Miles Gaskin, they're aware of their ability and how it relates to the NFL defense. And so he just turns it straight up, bang, and he picks up his two yards. You know, it, this is something you can work with. All right, here we go. On this one, you can see, look at all the motion that's going on. You have slant, you have slant blocks to the right. Kinley's pulling to the left. You've got a double here, and the tight end's coming across to get to the second level. This is very complicated blocking, and it's nice. And again, a lesser back might get nervous by what he sees here and try to take it outside. But Ahmed shows patience to hold him. He holds him right here. He goes to the outside, forces that linebacker to just take that half a step. And he does his pitter-pat dance. He's able to keep the motion going by not planting hard. And he's able to pop off here with his left foot to get that hard cut to take it back inside. Now, this, you know, you're going to say, oh, it was only four or five yards. But this is, brings consistency. And that's the key, consistency. And, and coaches, running back coaches, all coaches, but especially running back coaches, they love this. They love this. They actually probably even love this more than the big play because you can't build something off a big play with a lot of losses, unless it's Barry Sanders, of course. But this kind of consistency is like, I could put him in there. I can trust that we're going to keep the machine going. Look at this power size here. You got three tight ends, five linemen. Now, you'd expect to get a little bit of blocking here. But Shaheen doesn't get the best block. But again, Ahmed understands that I'm hitting this. I'm picking up my yards, and I'm going to live to fight another day. And he takes a shot, and for a little guy, not bad, he's able to pick up four to five yards. I mean, Chargers aren't the best run-stopping defense, but still, this is something that Miami Dolphins haven't had for years, consistency. This right here was excellent penetration on the draw. And you have one hole, but you have to get around and out here. It's going to take, you have the leverage of the linebacker on the offensive lineman. This is, this is not going to be easy. An average running back would get maybe to, the, to one or two yards out of this. But Ahmed is able to turn it with his speed and cut it up. <coughs> and again... That's five more yards. Now, the one major issue that I see, it, through much of the night, the Dolphins understood Ahmed's weakness, and that's his pass blocking. And so they protected him. And I think this is something that um, is going lim to limit him this year unless he can make quantum growth in his pass blocking. But watch this form. It's terrible. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. He, the defender's charging into him. And what is he doing? He's just sitting there waiting to take the blow. He's hugging him. 
He's got to get those hands up and drive. He's got to try to break that inertia with some kind of force. He can't absorb it. He's too small. This guy probably outweighs it by 30 pounds, 20 pounds at least. And then you see that. So this, he had very poor pass blocking. But a lot of times the Dolphins would have him go out and pass plays or they run the play action off him. So he wasn't required to block all that much, but it wasn't pretty. But, you know, again, he's a backup for now. Uh, Miles Gaskin was terrible last year in pass blocking, but he improved. So, again, you, you see this? The, you know, you want to get on the Dolphins' uh, offensive linemen. No, they're not the best in the world. But by play design, uh, by scheme, and by an occasional excellent set of blocks by the offense, you're constantly finding each game that is one, two, three big holes for the running back to burst through. Now, you can see his limitations here. He's got a great first step, great first gear. Second gear is pretty good. But after that, it kind of it, 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 it levels off. I really like a really top, like Breeder, if he had this, he would have taken it. Uh, but Breida lacks uh, lateral agility, among other things. So he's kind of... He sh- a- anytime you see a defender with his back towards you, you need to attack that. There's no way that he's going to get you. So he cuts it back into the grain. He, and maybe he didn't see the pursuit here. He cuts it right back into that and gets hit. He should have just simply kept on attacking it. But, you know, you can't complain about it. It's still an excellent play. This is why... You know, Fitzpatrick helped this offense tremendously with his quick reads, his uh, savviness, his gutsy runs, his experience. But in the same token, Tua might not have the experience, but the threat that he can run, these constant RPOs, these constant play actions, these constant boots, they're forcing defenders to, to, to focus on him, to take one player and to keep their eye on him. And you can see right here, 99, he's got his eye right on Tua. And so he's out of the play, and this opens up an excellent hole. You see Flowers puts a great block and opens this excellent hole for Ahmed to break through. And this is another big play. It's a 12-yard play, 11-yard play. You know, when you got a big hole, these are NFL running backs. They can make something happen. Blocking isn't the greatest here. It's not bad, it's good, but there's a free man. This guy read the play correctly. So instead of trying to break it outside, he understands, hey, I'm going to pick up my yards and go forward. This is good coaching. This is good uh, receiving of the coaching. And he just cuts it up. Three, four yards. (laughs) I mean, now you're in a situation of the next down is four yards easier. If this is a first down play, I mean, you have two, two plays to get six yards. And that, that's the difference between a professional and a non-professional. And it's not as easy as you think. And we didn't really get to see much of his hands. This is nice, but, but watch his short area explosion and short area agility. Bang! That is pretty nice. And he's able to cut, just like Gaskin. Gaskin has a very similar feel to him. He doesn't have the uh, explosion uh, that Ahmed has, but they are... Close area, um, they have close area evasion. And they are able to pick up that extra two or three yards by that close area evasion. 